Oh, hey, get in here. Dallas is about to start. Welcome to Ewing Barbecue, where we try to pump as much oil as humanly possible. My name is Mary. And I am Josh, and I am formally accusing my sister of plotting against me. <laughs> That's right. For like no reason, just because. Right. Because I'm a paranoid yeah. son bitch. Some bitch. Mm-hmm. Some bitch. Some bitch. So today is June 14th. And last night, I got to finally see The Cure in concert. So that was very exciting. And last me. night, before we jumped to the Patreon, well, might as well throw it out yeah. there, was the big 45th anniversary celebration out at Oscars in Palm Springs with Patrick yeah. Duffy, Linda Gray, Steve Canale, Kathy Podwell, Charlene Tilton, her TV mama Joan Van Ark was there who is turning 80 on the 16th. Um, Cherie Wilson, Kathy Podwell, and Michael Priest was there Michael as well. Priest. 86 years old. God love him. God love him. Yeah. Unfortunately, we were not represented at the... <laughs> no, we messed up with our scheduling completely. Yes, yes, we did. Yeah, we, we, we messed we up. We did. We jumped in on the fan uh, conventions that... Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, with, with didn't pan out so well but it's okay we still got to hang out yeah we we got to hang out with each other the four, four of us for the first time uh and there are only two of us tonight because the others are off uh having jock ewing's car serviced yes yes most definitely and uh, we will post pictures and videos and we've extended uh invitations to uh some of our associates that were there like uh, our 80s life and um Alan Cat Cattleman's club to come on and join us and tell us what went down and yeah, and I, and I, cool. I did try to uh throw out there to uh those that I could get in touch with to kind of name drop the podcast if they could uh during the event so let us know if you did we'll see yeah awesome <laughs> So quick uh, shout out to our beloved Patreon members, Brendan Phillick, Captain America, Marie Johnson, Michael Jung, Laura Francis, Jason Gregory, Jason Carter, Laura Bernheim, Brad Mulholland, Anita Wren, and Kristen Carlano. Seems like that list keeps growing. It does, and it's really nice because what our Patreon supporters are doing is actually letting us do this. Like it's paying all of our expenses so we're not doing out of pocket and um it's just wonderful and in exchange we try to give them extra content um as much as we humanly can as many fun things as we can so uh yeah if there's anything that you would like to see in available in our patreon we do have some old um, interviews with the so cast that are I, I believe you still have some that you We'll be posting, yeah. yes, spacing them out so they're not all posted at once. Spacing them out, yeah, yes. We have old uh, cast interviews. We have new cast interviews that we've done. We have like video versions of some of our podcasts. We mostly with celebs. Pretty cool. One uh, gem that we have that others do not seem to have is, uh, so I think it was over an hour long, an interview with David Jacobs that I did a while back. Right, which is still not uploaded, but, but it, is coming it just, soon. Just keep your eyes out, and I have some more that I'm going to be sending along, and we're going to pick up, uh, resume the chapters in the book, obviously. For- yes, yeah, so our book club, which we just took a little break from because, honestly, the book is terrible. But, you know, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Dropping words uh, that I don't don't uh, normally yeah. use terrible words don't normally use. We, do, we do not condone I, I don't condone them but um i don't want to i don't <gasps> want to i don't want to break the 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 flow of the book by not using them so i i do put a, i don't because it's not my place I, I put a disclaimer and i as a white girl it's not my place i put a disclaimer and i go into in, into the character that i'm reading the lines of so i just it's acting we all make choices but. <laughs> All right. So, uh, birthdays. Birthdays. Uh, I, as I previously mentioned, I had her listed twice, but for some reason, but it is June sixteenth. Joan Van Ark will be eighty. Believe it or not, Sweet. a lot of these uh, cast members are getting up there. Priscilla Pointer's ninety nine. William Smithers is in his it's insane nineties. Um, the guy who played uh, 
Hong uh, during the Southeast Asian, oh, the yeah. Mister Yu, Mister yeah. Yuwang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is in his late nineties, as or somewhere as well. <laughs> Danon Simpson, who I, I, I can I can drive. We the the re, big reunion was last night, and we will post some videos and clips. And I want to thank uh, Alan Catton, Kathy Podwell's social media manager, and Audrey Lander's son Daniel, who was sending me stuff on the fly as well. That I'm going to get up there. I just. Uh, with the time difference, they were coming in at about two o'clock in the morning, my time. So I was kind of, uh, had a date with my pillow at the, at that point. <laughs> um, but that reunion was then, but here on the Ewing barbecue podcast, we're always staging reunions. We had Charlene Tilton and Lee McCluskey. We had Lee McCluskey yeah. and Audrey Landers who had not seen each other in 40 years, 41 years. Basically we love Lee McCluskey. And That's I, what I think saying. the audio of that, is or should be posted soon. Um, yes. But uh, speaking of Lee McCluskey, on the 21st, he will be 68 years old. And Monty Markham, who played Clint Ogden, was born in 1935. So he is going to be 88, I believe. Denon Simpson has a birthday on the 20th. I don't have a year, so I'm not going to. And uh, Ted Shackelford who is younger than Joan Van Ark, and they first acted together on Wonder Woman. Uh, I loved that show. He will be 77. And on the 26th is the anniversary in 2018, Daniel Pylon, who played Naldo Marquetta. <laughs> he passed away June 26, 2018. Jenna. Jenna. Well, let's dive in. All right, tonight we are talking about Season 6, Episode 8, Episode 111 of the series, The Ewing Touch. If JR takes one step out of line, I guarantee you, we'll destroy him. Other people have fought the Ewings before, and they've regretted it. But that stupid grudge you're carrying is going to cost you what little family you have. Me and Mama will be together. I won't be the one to lose the family. You will. I've invited Frank Crutcher to join us. I want you all to get to know Frank. When's the last time you saw Mama laugh like that? <laughs> Not since before Daddy died. It was written by Howard Lakin, directed by Leonard Katzman, and aired November 19th, 1982, where the number one song in the U.S. was still Up Where We Belong by Joe Cocker and I Don't Want to Dance by Eddie Grant in the U.K., but the number one film in the U.S. this week is a new one. Dun, 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 Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, the only big news is uh, died today was um, an American sociologist named Irving Goffman died this day. He was 60 years old. Wow. I don't even know who he was. Yeah, me either. <laughs> And on Dallas. On Dallas, this episode continued to drop in the ratings and fell from four to five. Crazy. Albert Salmi, or as I uh, call him, Albert Salami, because his name looks too much like a salami, uh, who played Gil Thurman, appeared in movies uh, Escape from the Planet of the Apes and Caddyshack. But also, he played Alec Baldwin's father on Knott's Landing. A preacher, Jonathan Rush. And he died in Spokane, Washington on April 23rd, 1990. Spokane? Spokane, Spokane, Spokane. Spokane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John Carter uh, played Lieutenant Biddle on uh, Barnaby Jones. Uh, and on this episode, he played – John Carter played Carl Hennessy. And uh, – he reprised that role in a couple of later seasons as well. Joseph Rainer, who appeared in this episode, played minor roles through several different seasons. And he also played the role of Pam's doctor, Dr. Gord David Gordon, in episode 282, which hmm. was the Cliff met up with him and Pam later on. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. 
But he was replaced by a, another actor in that role in the new series. And this guy uh, who replaced him, oh, yeah. I'd have to look up his name, but he played a reoccurring role as an FBI agent on Picket Fences, which I've been watching. So every time I see him, oh. I go, oh, that's Dr. David Gordon from the new series. <laughs> there are a lot of Dallas actors who played on uh, Picket Fences, including... Um, yeah, must have been like similar casting agent. Yeah, including Lee Taylor Young, who played Kimberly Kreider. She played Rachel Harris, who was the mayor for a while. <laughs> and their first mayor and was played one of the patients in the sanitarium in the later years. Oh. Joseph Rainier also played Sam Culver in Dallas the Early Years. Ah. Lacey Wayne was a real-life pilot who flew the South Fork helicopter in 24 episodes that were filmed on location in Dallas during seasons 5 through 7 or 6 through 8, depending on your numbering them, <laughs> and numbering. 9 through 11 or 10 through 12. That's, yeah. that's all I have. And it's kind of interesting seeing the helicopter fly, land right next to the driveway and right next to the house, buzz, literally <laughs> buzz the house as it's going by. I'm going, what the? Right. I, is it safe? I don't... <laughs> it, it's it's got to reverberate through the house. You would think so. Yeah. Yes. And oh, and speaking uh. of other people, I just recently saw watching St. Elsewhere. I'm compiling pictures and lists of Dallas people that have appeared on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had mentioned Walt Driscoll, Ben Piazza, who played uh, Dr. Josiah Bartlett. But in a recent episode that I was watching during their final season, Dennis Patrick, who played Vaughn Leland, played one of the hospital's administrative board that actually fired the head of the hospital. Huh. Yeah. Wow. It was, uh, like... Crazy. I'm like, oh, that's creepy, creepy Von Leland <laughs> with those eyebrows. Those eyebrows. Yeah, that guy's mm. a creep. All right. So we open on Ewing Oil, where JR is now legally operating Petro State. We don't know the name of this guy. It's just his guy that is random man that comes mm -hmm. in, is setting up a dummy corporation, which is what Petro State mm -hmm. is. And which is, a, which this guy says is a specialty, is, is dummy corporations. Yeah. And JR is obviously up to something. Mm hmm. Uh, and then Walt Driscoll calls. Yeah. Uh, so apparently JR did take care of things with the, with uh, Carol's accident that was staged. Yes. Because that's what it, out of the kindness of his heart. Right. <laughs> but now that I got you by the balls, Driscoll. This is what I want. Right. I want my damn. This is what I, I want, want my damn variance on fields one through seventeen, and I want it done by one p.m. Yeah, and Walt's well, like, uh, that's the sort of thing that takes time. Like, I have to work on it. He's like, yeah, I don't want to hear that. Just do it. He wants to pump at full capacity, and I, if he's pumping at full capacity, and the market is soft, do you know mm -hmm. what is going to hit the fan? Yeah. That, that, that's. And you kind of see, I feel like you see Walt in that moment realizing that he's been had. Like, I don't think he fully realized it until that moment. And then he's just like, oh, shit. Yeah, because he just has the, his look and his posture starts to change. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He, his balls are in a vice of a Ewing making. And he's, his career could go down the rabbit hole because of this. And he's realizing all of that in real time as we watch him on the phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's poor guy. Yeah. Also on the phone is Bobby at South Fork, um, and he's handling a business call while Pam is trying to get his attention with Christopher. Apparently, the parts were not shipped out to somewhere. We don't know what parts they right. were. And we don't know what was. Bobby's upset about it. And Ellie is now getting involved, and they're taking Christopher. I guess they're going to the uh, the adoption hearing. So they yeah, get it. he's yeah, got to yeah. get off the phone. He's got to get out the door and busy day today. Yeah, got to got to take a break from the bidness to uh, mm -hmm. to welcome the newest if the hearing goes well. Right. Which we don't we we don't well. anticipate there are going to be problems or anything. But yeah, I mean, we there's nothing. There's been no thing that we know. But this of. is Dallas. It's true. It is. Dun, dun, dun. And we cut to the gold buildings in Cliff's office. Mm, gold building. Which is apparently when I've been, we've rode into the city, there's a, 
Josh Henderson fully supports this restaurant. It's his favorite taco joint down there. Taco Bueno is right near the gold buildings. Oh, I nice. noticed that when I was riding into downtown Dallas. But, um, taco Bueno. I'll have to check, check that out next time. Yes. So Cliff calls the McLeish brothers to tell them he's decided he is in. He is all in on this thing. All it's in. It's going to be his first big deal. He's pumped. Let's let's sign yep. the papers. Let's do this. Let's get it let's done. Get going. And they're like, oh. ooh, ooh, this is awkward. Sorry. But, you know, we approached you because we thought our guy was going to back out, but then he didn't. And so and the, and the, we the, already did figured it and out. And they're still sitting in that office that looks like it's from some <laughs> 80s, like cheap 80s sci-fi movie or something like that. Maybe, you know, that's Canada, man. No, they're, <laughs> they're still in town, I believe. They haven't left town yet. Are they? Because okay. they're calling from the same office setup that they were calling from when they were in uh, town. So, uh, okay, good point. Because Bobby, because uh, Cliff was ready to meet with them, so he, obviously they had to still be in town. Oh, right. So, right, 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 right. Yes, you, you are. Correct. Well, now, now that it's now that uh, it's over, you know, he, uh, Cliff is like, yeah, who, 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 who got the deal anyway? Who, 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 <laughs> yeah, who was it? I'm, I'm not going to have any issue with it. Who, who was it? And they're like, oh, it was Bobby Ewing, and we almost passed on him because he was like an hour late to our meeting, but his lovely wife is the one who cinched it for him because she was like hanging out with us the whole time. Have you heard of her? And he was like, he's like, do you, do you, oh, do you know her? And Cliff's like, uh, yeah, I know her. How informed are these guys, <laughs> these business guys, wouldn't they know, Bobby is a public figure, wouldn't they know who his wife is? I think that they would do a little bit of research. You know, that was a kind of like a little like, yeah, that was a little bad choice on their end. Because yeah. you always want to know who you're getting into bed with, so to speak. Right. And calls his mother who doesn't answer the phone because she's at the adoption hearing sitting yep. next to Ellie. That must be uncomfortable yep. uh, given their recent. Uh, I think stuff's going on, so they don't really like have to make conversation, I guess. So yeah. it's just, yeah, they're just sitting there. And I think they're adult enough to know that this is a priority moment and they can separate the two for the yeah. moment. Yeah. 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 Rebecca and Ellie, if nothing else, are adults and can handle that. And then Bobby invites everyone to a celebration lunch, which Rebecca's like, uh, I think I have to go do something. I, think I have but to then go he's like, no, no, no. paint my toenails or uh, something. Yeah, I have to go milk the cow. <laughs> um, but then they, they get her, convince her to go. So she does. I, I would like to be a fly on the wall at that, that lunch, which they don't show. Right. It would be, uh, they don't show it, but I bet it was a little awkward. Highly uncomfortable. <laughs> Walt brings the variants into the office, but he's super unhappy about it. He realizes his balls are still in that vice. Mm -hmm. And the vice is basically a Ewing vice on one side and his career being crushed on the other mm -hmm. side. So Walt tells us that the OLM has made some political enemies. Uh, that's not good. And um, and that may, because of that, it's going to like put the OLM out of business. So basically, he's basically just messed up his career by doing this. And JR does not give one fuck. No, but he and his lovely wife, Carol, are going to have a wonderful time in the Caribbean. Yeah. And in, in like a half hour, you have to go to the airport and pick up your tickets ASAP. Uh, J and you just see him like, Is that uh, Dallas, Fort Worth or Love Field? Yeah. Oh, it's true. He doesn't even specify. He's just like, go. I don't care. Oh, JR, uh, hello? Uh, I, I drove to the wrong airport. Well, that's your fault, Walt. Now you get your ass over the other airport. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is clear across town. And President Kennedy, I always, he, he landed at Love Field in 1953. He did. I always think of, of Love Field as the Kennedy Airfield. Me too. And I, every time I land there, I always try to picture him landing there and just where it was. I've never landed at Love Field. I've always oh, so, uh, Southwest goes to Love Field, so I, oh, I, nice. I do Southwest. So yeah, Walt. I wonder if Walt is flying Southwest. Well, whatever Southwest was in 1982. That was their basically their one of their main main flight stops uh, in that time period was eight, South uh, Dallas. Was Southwest around in the in the eighties? Yes, 80s? they were. 
Because well, I know that those were, those plane companies have like bought each other out and stuff a bunch. Oh of no, times. they were going in and out of Dallas. In fact, their birthday uh, celebration. If anyone out, oh, this is going to be posted after. But tomorrow night at midnight ends their birthday celebration, where you can get forty percent off uh, certain plane tickets for tra- travel nice. uh, for later in the year through the end of the year. So if we knew when we were going to South Fork for our thing, we could have uh, booked tomorrow by tomorrow night, but. I don't know. Yeah, we have to choose that soon. So speaking of making enemies, let's cut to that uh, event that Donna is at with Ray. Yes, the the shindig, the political shindig that Dave invites him to. And it looks like they all these are the people that he was talking about, that Walter School was talking about that are his enemies because they are talking some smack about him personally and about the OLM. Yeah, and and then Ray Ray does have to uh bounce. Oh my god, like immediately Ray's just like sitting there and then he's just like I got to go. Yeah, and I honestly thought Ray and Donna were going to be kept out of this fight for you and oil. But now with this political mm-hmm. crap and the OLM and the this and the that, mm-hmm. Donna's getting kind of you can hear you can hear the sucking sound like <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she gets sucked into the. She and Dave seem to really agree politically, and in fact, like when Dave sees them walking out, because Donna's like, oh, "You want to leave? Okay." And so then Dave runs over and he's like, "You're not going to go, are you? I have like 20 people you need to meet." And she's like, "Well, Ray wants to go, and he's my ride." So yeah, and. She's not the only one that uh, is going to catch another ride because Ellie catches another ri- uh, taxi from the restaurant because she says to go do something after the lunch. Right. But um, so Dave is going to agree to drive Donna home. Yeah, he agrees to drive her home. Well, that's so kind of you, Dave. <laughs> Where did you get your rental car, Dave? Was it Hertz, Avis, Budget? So then Clayton and Swellen are having lunch. Swellen, yeah. And so she, she like pries about Dusty's marriage. She's like, so is that? Going well. Well, yes, well, and they're going to be, uh, but they're they're leaving soon. They're going back on the rodeo circuit. I just picture them riding around this. And then she's just like, okay, that's good, I guess. Now the real reason I brought you here. The real reason she brought him there is, well, first she tries to encourage him to move to Dallas. Mm. Because it'll be much better for her. And he's like, well, that's the only reason I could think of moving here would be like, it's easier to see you. That's the only thing. And then she was like, okay, I have a really big favor to ask you. Now she gets to the meat of the lunch. Mm -hmm. She asked him to give away the bride. To to J.R. Ewing, the man that Clayton does not like. Yes. And more, I think more than doesn't like, like it's despises, pretty much detests them. Yeah, loathes. And we also know that Clayton has a huge crush on Suellen. So this Hell, the you man, can just man see bought he's an super engagement conflicted. ring for her, for God's sakes. I know, right? He's so conflicted, but he just musters up the gumption to be like, it would be a privilege because she says that he's the closest thing that she's ever known to a real father. Which is go, adorable. Go for the jugular, Sue Ellen. Go for the jugular. Right. And he reluctantly agrees. He totally, yeah. He would do anything for her, I think. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Won't do that. Thank you, Marvin Lee Day. Meatloaf. So now we are leaving the after adoption lunch. And Ellie decides she's going to take a taxi because she has some things to do. Yep. Dan, the, wo- the woman should have a driver. I mean, Angela Channing had Chow Lee, her her butler, as her. her. Chow Lee on Falcon Crest was a butler. He was the cook. He was the bodyguard. He he was everything. He was he he drove Angela Channing around. Ellie needs a driver if she's not going to drive. She does. She's she's, she she's does. too yeah. She's too important of a person to just be getting in the back of a damn taxi. That's true. I don't know what the, who who came up with that idea, but I don't know. Get the woman a driver. <laughs> but as they all start parting ways, basically Pam and Bobby take off, and then uh, Rebecca just is like, "Okay, I got to get out of here." And then Ellie's like, "Hey, can we talk?" I'm making a beeline for my car, bitch. <laughs> and she's like, Ugh, "Okay, uh, all right." Hmm. And 
I was like, okay, like we share a grandson now, so we have to think about other things. And I think that the two of us should be working together to put a stop to this whole feud situation. It's a reasonable request. Yeah, I think it's reasonable. Rebecca does not, though. No, because it was not her son, it was not Ellie's son that was in the hospital fighting for right. his life. Right. But that's over, and he's back on his feet, and it, it, we should put it behind us. Right, right, right. Well, and then Rebecca's like, okay, fine. Basically, she's saying, well, maybe we could do this as long as JR is not a piece of shit and starts things. Because if JR starts it, we will end it. And we will end you and everybody. Mm -hmm. And then, so then that gets Ellie getting her like feathers ruffled. And she's just like, oh, well, you know, other people have tried to go against the Ewings before. And failed. Uh, and the, the skunk's tail oh is, is rising. To uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I was like, ladies, ladies. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's, and it was just, it ends up just being a big standoff and then they part. And Ellie says, I've done my part. Now it's time that you do yours. Uh huh. Slam. Mike, All right, Mike then. drop, get in the taxi. Still needs a driver. JR wants Petro State to buy up some company as some part of a master plan that's going to get him all of Ewing oil. Ray went looking for Mickey at the stud bar, and they said he didn't show up, and now Ray is, like, pissed off. Better to be pissed off than pissed on. Oh, my God. Lucy's modeling again, and... uh what the Lucy's hell is this ad campaign? Zorro the Vampire. I, and now it's, like, some... Cupid like, doll. Courtney Love... Cat be yelling, early 90s, kinder whore kind of riot girl look thing that's happening. And with roller skates for this Texas... Co Texas drink? Cola? Texas Cola? Okay. What What is this ad campaign? <laughs> I'm very confused. I want to know more. But she looks like a, some Cupid doll or something with the pink dress and the, the friggin' ribbons coming yeah, out of her hair. baby doll dress. Yeah. I'm like, okay. But Annie is doing her job, taking those photos. Annie's doing her, her thing, and she's being amazing. And what I love how the set keeps changing in her place, because later it looks like an outdoor restaurant. Uh, but then Bill, the client, asks Lucy out on a date. He's played by Nicholas Hammond, and I've got, I'm going to look him up, because that name is very familiar to me. And Lucy's just like, okay, I'm going to put up a boundary here, and uh, here's my thing is I don't take clients. And which is, I think, a very professional stance to take. And he just looks like, like he kind of takes it well, but he takes, he's a little taken aback, but he seems to take it well, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We know underneath he's like, uh, I, I want to get this girl in my stable. The woman's going through a divorce. Then the Ewings are toasting Christopher, but Lucy's not there. She's like, I'm noticing that she's now becoming like, I don't want to say it the wrong way, but a side piece. She's like yeah. being pushed off she's, to the side. She's like not involved in her own, like any other storylines. She just has her own like little thing. It was like when Mitch was working at the hospital, I felt like they were cutting in on an episode of St. Elsewhere or something. And then cutting back right. to the, just, yeah. like, okay, what do we do yeah. with her? Uh, we got her under contract. We got to do something. Um, yeah. Like everybody else's are kind of uh, mixed together and hers is just separate. Right, and they didn't even have her at the dinner later that night. Or, yeah, yeah, what the heck? So, oh yes, toasting Christopher's adoption. Yeah, and Ellie says that tomorrow she's invited Punk and Mavis for dinner, and um, she's also invited Frank Crutcher, because she'd like them all to get to know him better. That doesn't sit well with anybody, because they all give these looks. No, that goes over like a lead balloon. Mm, lead balloon. Yeah, that really, um, Bobby is like, well, I don't know if I can be back. I'll be in Houston, but make sure you're all at the uh, Fairview room tonight, the room at the Fairview for our Christopher celebration dinner. Or party, yeah. He wants everyone at his party, but he doesn't want any part of the right. Frank Crutcher party. <laughs> no. He's going to try to make it back. Okay. And we cut to Cliff venting to Afton about Pam fucking him over on that deal, and Afton just can't even. Yeah. It's like she tries to calm him down, but he's determined to destroy the Ewings because Pam screwed him over. And she's like, "Look, you have to do with your shit better than this. Like, you, you really have to, and you need to like use your brains over your emotions to do that. Whatever you want to do, use your brains and not passion." And he's like, "Oh, 
Well, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Mm. And over at the bar, speaking of passion, Mickey wants to get passion and maybe have a threesome with a couple of uh, bimbo. He was totally it, trying to have a threesome. It, and they're nuts. like, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But then Ray comes in and breaks up the party. Party pooper Ray. The warden has arrived. Yeah. And Mickey gives him some attitude and all this stuff. And it's the same shtick from Mickey. Man. Attitude. I'm a, I'm a hot-headed yeah. punk. I'm not going to listen to anything. And Ray is like, no, you're going to respect my authority. You're going to respect my authority. And I'm going to stick to you and I'm going to make you or I'm going to break you. I'm going to be all over you like white on rice, pal. Mickey reminds him like like he threatens basically like threatens to send him back to Kansas. And Mickey reminds him that it was not his idea to come to Texas. He's like, OK, and no skin off my neck, pal. I'll go back to Texas. So I just go 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 back to Kansas. So I'll just be riding around on my little moped. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's going to make or break him, which like, OK, right. <sighs> Because uh, I'm a I'm a cowboy, and you're cowboy. your family, and that may not mean anything to you, but that means something to me. All right, <laughs> all right, right, all right, right. Get up on your high horse. That can't sit well with Donna. Donna's probably just like this whole thing is like get that snot nose. Yeah, she doesn't. Of, she doesn't care. Send She's back like, to whatever. Kansas and let whatever happens happen because just it just gives me the creepy crawlies. And then the next morning, Bobby gets picked up for work to go to Houston in the Ewing helicopter right next to the house. Right. They they almost clipped the cars in the driveway for crying out loud. I'm sure the whole house was just like rattling and everybody's in, oh, 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 the helicopter must be out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has the, he has a partially unbuttoned shirt, of course. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have that written down. Like, Bobby, <laughs> Jesus, button up your shirt. God, you're going to work. Yeah, but well, he, at least he's not mowing the lawn with the uh, Ewing oil on his chest. That's true. That is very. That would true. be a lot of lawn. Take that would be a lot stars. of lawn to mow. They must. <laughs> it would. It, it definitely would. He'd be out there in the pa- in so he- in two stick pasture all day long. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So he he leaves in the helicopter, and then the phone rings, and luckily. What? It's for Pam. And luckily there is, it's always for the person that answers the phone. Always. And, so and luckily there <laughs> happens to be a phone right outside. Right, right there. That's never there, but it is right yes. now. Yes. So. It, it might, it yeah. might be the same phone that Pam used to call her mother in the last episode. They just moved it over. Uh, probably. Yeah. I'd like to see a wide shot and see all the phone cords all over the ground as they, uh-huh. and the director's going, don't trip over the cord. Don't trip over the cord. <laughs> Oh, we got to take that again. Don't Michael Priest on the sidelines yelling, cut, cut. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's Cliff on the phone, and he would like a word with Bobby. And she's like, er, you just missed him. And then he's like, well, I'd like a word with you. Cliff, is something, Cliff, like, is something wrong? Okay. It's like, as a matter of fact, yes, it is. And I want you to meet me at Reunion Tower at one o'clock. And she's like, okay. Okay. Okay, we'll What's do. up his ass? Yeah. She, like, literally has no idea. And he's got an oil derrick up his ass. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So Ewing Oil, JR tells his boys to pump 1 through 17 at max capacity. They Well, JR, the market is soft. We really shouldn't. Don't you worry about that. Just, just pump. Yeah. And we're seeing more and more yeah. of this conference room that never existed before. Yeah. I think it's Jock's office. His old office. Well, that's it's the well, that's kind of depressing. I know. They really should have just locked it away and kept it as a museum. A <laughs> must see museum. Okay, so we have we cut to South Fork, and this is a very nice like pan of like the whole back pool and patio. And it's empty. It's very empty. And they're still on location, obviously, because it was a nice the wind, yeah. you can see the trees rumbling a little. Yep. It's not that sound stage where you can tell that there's the matted back wrap, backdrop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tell that it's real. Because Bud's automotive truck drives in. But yes, uh, uh, and Ellie walks out. But she was silently emoting, so we need to... Um, she was... Oh, she was silently emoting, so drink. Chug, chug a lug. So yeah, Bud from Bud's automotive, is, he stops by to talk about Jock's car. Was he driving the truck? Yeah. 
Then why yes. did he get out the passenger's door? Hmm. I didn't notice that. That's what I wrote here. But then later we see the car being driven away. So maybe there was somebody else. I'll have to rewatch that. Yeah. I'm not it's sure. It's weird. I don't know. Yeah. Well, on Dukes of Hazard, they used to climb in and out the windows because apparently the doors didn't work. Mm. Right. <laughs> good old don't want it to take the time good to open old it. Boys. Goo, 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 goo. Never mean to know how. Um, so he's like, hey, I want to talk about Jack's car. Like, if you're not planning to sell it, like, it's not good for cars to just, just sit there. Like, and Jack always took really good care of his car. Like, you should be servicing that. And for anyone that gets down to South Fork, that car is still there in pristine condition. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, it, it's true. Cars do need to be turned over. And we, I have a neighbor down the street. Uh, the, the father died. And then a year or two later, the mother died, and that was. And the parents' cars are still sitting there, and they have not been turned on or touched or moved in several years. And they're not going to move. They're they're <laughs> starting to rust over, and there's yeah. moss growing. The batteries are moss dead. is growing in the driveway under the car now. Yeah, so I think we should have a jock's car service. We don't want it sitting. Yeah, definitely, because it's a nice car. And uh, so she agrees to do that. I really like this scene because I really think it shows just all of the like complicated stuff that comes up after a death that you have to deal with that you you wouldn't think of. Mm-hmm. There's just a lot of like random things that you have to do, like service. You have to decide, are you am I going to keep the car or am I going to sell it? And if I'm keeping it, I have to service it like there's and I mean. I'm sure with Jock, mostly there's a lot of that stuff. And so they're just showing us a little piece of it. One like word that. comes to mind, a lot of minutia. Yes, definitely. And as far yeah. as we know, the car never was seen or mentioned again. But so we could assume that it's it's sitting in the in the garage to this day. Yeah, probably. Although it's down by Elena's cottage uh, at this point. <laughs> Um, so she has to go look for the keys. Oh yeah, she does. She's like, oh god, they're probably upstairs. I don't even know. That was another little detail of like just every everyday yeah. stuff that goes on. Yeah. Like oh yeah. yeah, keys, and people are always looking for car keys. Yeah. So it just showed the the human side of yeah of and that they yeah. didn't always have uh, everything clearly laid out and spread out. And then Ray's going to teach Mickey how, oh, yeah. how to ride a horse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And Mickey's just like, okay. He, he's just long for the ride. He's like, all right, whatever you want, man. I bet you know what end of the horse this was used for, huh? <laughs> and then they cut, they show the car being taken away. Very quickly. And Ellie looks sad, silently emoting. Oh, God, Ellie, you're going to get us liquored up tonight. All right. Damn it, Ellie. Okay, so we see Cliff and Pam. They're meeting at Reunion Tower. See, now I mentioned this in the last episode where Bobby got the deal, Pam was there waiting, and Cliff was the side piece to the second choice. And true to form, Cliff explodes, bl- accusing Pam of going behind his back. That's like, Cliff, going behind Cliff, his back. You, she had no freaking clue you were even approached about this deal. Right. She's like, how would I even know that? Like, I didn't, I'm not involved in your business. Like, I have no idea. How would I know that? And he just, he can't even hear it. Doesn't He's just like care. Nope. He doesn't. He is so blinded nope. with this disgusting hatred and this this poison yeah. that's eating away at his core. And it's just like, Cliff, you need to have an exorcism on your body. You need to have like a friggin' like you need to go yeah. in for like it turns into a psycho. You need to go in and have like friggin' colonic hydrotherapy and just flush all the crap out of your system. Okay, just just yeah. flush it. And he's like, well, you've chosen a side in the Barnes Ewing feud. And she's like, no, you just literally chose for me. I have not done anything. Like, you're insane. And she said, if you're not careful, this, this stupid feud of yours is going to cost you your fa- what little family you have left. And he's like, no. And then, no. No, it's going to cost you. Me and Mama are going to be together, and you're going to be out of the family. And she's like, Jesus Christ. Okay, and then he gets up, walks away, man. and she throws his money on the ground. Yeah, he like throws his money uh, on the table, and then she picks it up. But she's like so mad, she just picks it up and throws it. And I like that because that's something I would do. Like I would just be so mad, I'd have to throw something. Like, at least she didn't throw any of the glasses. And at this wedding I was at, the reception, my mother knocked over a glass, and this is like a women's club. It's a 
or high end club in New York City. She mm-hmm. knocked over a glass with her drink, and the ice went everywhere. The glass did not break. I don't know how strong that glass was, but hmm. that was amazing. And it wasn't until the end of the night when one of the wait staff actually dropped a glass and it shattered all over the floor. Oof. But it's a good thing Pam didn't start throwing glasses, but she threw the money instead. Right. We don't want broken glass. This isn't a Jewish wedding. Yeah, we don't. <sighs> Bobby needs to button his goddamn shirt. He just does. Yeah. Because he is, um, what's the guy's name? Munson, is it? I I didn't write down his name. I didn't catch his name. I just knew that Bobby was just immediately pissed. Yeah. Because uh, apparently, JR canceled the work order to send the parts because he was the one that signed them. And now that the fields are split up, Bobby grabs a piece of paper and says, here's your new deal in writing. And well, that's not- Yeah, Bobby threatens to beat this. Guy, this guy who's doing his job, he threatens to beat him up if he does not. Bobby's being a hothead. <laughs> ship beat him to a Yeah. It's- and I don't know if this is on a drinking list, but we should add it to the drinking game. Every time Bobby just like threatens someone bodily harm for like no reason. So I right. want you, to, for since we are now 111 episodes into the series, everybody go back and basically pound down an entire bottle of alcohol to catch up for all of the times that Bobby has threatened to beat somebody up. Yeah. And then, but and, don't, please don't bill us for your, um, t- your hospitalization. And tell us how your liver is in the morning. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh my Peace God. Peace out, yo. Ugh. Yeah. I'm adding it to the list because it just happens so much. Yeah. So Bobby's going to deal with JR you, and he threatens Munson into getting those parts shipped. And Yeah. Monta's just like, fine, okay, psycho, I'll do it. Psycho killer, qu'est-ce que c'est? Yeah. Qu'est-ce que c'est is right, yeah. Um, so the BJR goes to Holly's and house. Bonzo is sitting there in the pool sunning himself. <laughs> Jordan, her guy, and she just like sends him off. She's like, hey, just go get us a pizza or something. And he's just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so JR wants to... Um, Holly to not renew the contracts with the suppliers because he's got some master plan in mind and she wants to know what it is. Mm-hmm. And she's starting to try to come on to him. Yeah, she starts like flirting with him and it's really confusing because then he's just like, What? I, I'm like, not going to explain that because you're really going to confuse Bonzo when he comes back out here. And he's like, And I already offered. Like, I propose this and you turn me down. And then she's like, Well, J.R. Ewing doesn't give up after. Trying once. I want to. I want to remain like, pure for my wedding. <laughs> pure for my wedding. Okay, Jr. You need an exorcism, pal. Yeah, no, dude. <laughs> he wants to remain pure for his wedding, and then after the wedding's over, he's going to go out chasing some tail. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. He just needs to get too well and back in the stable. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. And then, um, and then he tells her, yeah. he tells her she might want to get some more bananas because uh, for <laughs> her. <bottom. laughs> And he says he wants to, their relationship is nice as it is, and he'd just like to keep it that way and not mess it up. And she's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Then okay. we go back to the photography studio, which is mm-hmm. now the area is set up like a outdoor restaurant. Restaurant, There's yeah. It's a backdrop. Yeah. And I'm thinking, at first I'm sitting there thinking, wait a minute, she did not agree to go out with him, and they're at some lunch tables and then it pans out and uh, I see it's, it's a set for their photo shoot. Right. And, but she's not wearing some ridiculous, stupid outfit yet. True. I think that's like, they're getting ready to set up or something and, or maybe it's after the shoot. I don't and know. And she's either got to change into, or she has changed out of whatever ridiculous costume. Right. Whatever ridiculous thing they have for her. Exactly. Yeah. And Bill is pressing it again. He just won't, does not understand why she won't go out with him. Bill. And so she's like, uh, she explains more than she needs to because she already explained why. Right. Divorce and all this stuff. And Bill, uh, this is a full pun intended. You need to shut your <laughs> Von Trapp. No means no. and Shut yeah, your you, Von Trapp. Go back to Austria. And she starts to walk away and he grabs her hand and she freaks out. Like physically reacts. Yeah. And the look on her face is like, if looks could kill, he'd be a dead man. Yeah. And she looks scared out of her mind, too. And then he's just like, what? Yeah. You don't. 
Well, he obviously doesn't know she was raped or anything like that, but you do. He doesn't, you, but he needs to like listen to the words that are coming out of her mouth. Right. She is saying no, and she's giving more than valid. Re- she's giving way more reasons than she needed to. She just should have could have just said right. No, no means no. Uh, so and yeah. again, she's spinning off on the side in her own little storyline here. We cut to South Fork, and Frank is there. And there's small talk about his daughter, who was living. She's married a Frenchman, living in New Orleans, cooking and the stuff. Some French talk cooking. about Texas steaks and uh, and antiques yeah. and all the just you know, just random garbage chatter. And then she she goes yeah. to show him the antique, the the silverware in the other room, and. Then Punk asks Jr. about the variances, and well, you know, Mama doesn't want to talk business at the uh, nice, nice way to sidestep the conversation. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And then Bobby comes in and wants to talk to Jr., but he goes, "No, we got more important things to deal with here. When was the last time you saw Mama laugh?" And then they both look, and she is having a good time. Well, not since, not, like, since, not oh. since before Daddy died. Yeah. That was a ni- nice, um, nice way to dodge that. Uh, argument that was going to ensue totally totally because we cut to after the dinner ellie's in the kitchen and uh she's silently emoting again so he had a drink okay and then bobby comes in in his in his robe and ellie thought dinner was a success and that frank is a nice man Mm -hmm. and they talk about bobby's it's not upset it just feels that it's strange seeing his mother with another man and Ellie said she thought long about um, a long time about having him the way she said it, having him. And I'm going, OK, I thought I misheard that because yeah. then Bobby looks at her like, oh, what? <laughs> I'm like having him. What do you like? Uh, did you jump in the sack? Did we miss something here? Right. That's what that sounds like. And Bobby's like, uh, well. How was it? Well, no, we just went to second base and uh, out, out, out in the stables uh, while, Mi- while Mickey was playing craps and the next thing over. <laughs> oh, God. But he's just a friend. And you say he's just, just a, a friend. friend. Say, oh, baby. You. you got what I mean. <laughs> he, he. Say mm-hmm. he's just a friend. Uh, Lucy's divorce hearing is very uneventful, just like Christopher's adoption. So that's two very uneventful court uh, yeah. things. And mm-hmm. the Mitch is not contesting the divorce. And Dan mm-hmm. Fielding uh, makes his um, statements. And then the divorce is granted. And, it's granted. And um, that's the end of Dan Fielding. And now he's off to yeah. work for Judge Harry Stone up in New York City. Mm-hmm. And Ellie was at the divorce here. You could see her in the background. Ah. And Lucy's wearing that blue dress. And then we go to JR calls Gil Thurman to come over at 2 30 PM. And then mm-hmm. and then Bobby comes in and confronts JR about the canceled contracts. And they basically mm-hmm. drop threats to each other about the contest and all this stuff. Yeah. And Bobby threatens physical violence, so drink. Oh, yes. What's Should his middle name not be James? It should be Bobby, I'll tear you apart, Ewing. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Yes. Now we're going on to about Cliff and Pam, uh, Afton. Okay. Afton is annoyed, and she's trying to tell Cliff that Pam didn't try to hurt him on purpose, and Cliff just ain't listening at all. I, I don't know. He just... It's just the same old Cliff doing this. He, she mm-hmm. tells him to, you know, leave, leave it alone or blah, blah, blah. And she come to the club tonight and there could be some good context for him. And he goes, I hate being told what to do. Right. It's like, okay, Cliff, settle down. But Jordan calls ring, ring, ring. And he mm-hmm. goes, so, something fishy's going on here, Cliff. Uh, we need you to come to the Cattleman's Club. Okay, when? About now. Now. <laughs> so he just leaves. He jets. Uh, Cliff, I thought you don't like being told what to do. Maybe it's by a woman. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Oh, Cliff. You barnacle. 
So then Donna visits Ellie and invites her to uh, another Dave shindig. As I think she's sitting there doing a thing. crossword puzzle. And she's bored. She need, they, she's trying to coax Ellie to just get involved in something and just come to this political yeah. thing. Unbeknownst to them, what's going to happen at this political thing? We'll find. We'll see in a moment. Whoops. Yeah. But then yeah. We go. Th- these scenes really like are like connecting the, the yeah. dots. Of things. They are. They are. Just they're rapid fire. They're one after the other, and you have. So they. She, the part, she reluctantly agrees to go their, to the meeting, and then you yeah go on the cartel. Right. And then the, we cut to the cartel having their panties in a twist about J.R. drilling in the variants. And Walt, conveniently being out of town, goes, Cliff is like, oh, it's got to be J.R. J.R. has <laughs> got to be behind this. It cannot be coincidence that Walt Driscoll's out of town. Oh, which, yeah, I mean, he's being smart for once. We need to stop J.R. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then Dave Culver, yeah, poor Ellie. She feel mm-hmm. I feel like she's got thrown to the wolves here. Oh man, yeah, it's the political shindig thing, mm-hmm. and everybody is pissed off about Jr. and the variants. Mm-hmm. And I want to know. Who, and they call Ellie out on it. They're like, "Hey!" And I want to know who plays the guy that's speaking because he looks very familiar to me from somewhere. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know where I've seen him, but. I'll figure that out. So then Donna stands up to defend Ellie, and she's like, hey, we just need to replace the OLM because it's a dinosaur, and we need to... And they're like, well, with what? And she's like, I don't know, like an energy commission? And you could do this and this? And then they're like, oh, hey, you're pretty good at this. No, no, I don't want to get involved. Donna, you are involved. You're here. Yeah, you're very involved, Donna, and you're good at it because, of course, you are. And... Dave even throws her under the bus and says, no, no, don't listen to her. She, she's got good ideas. Uh-huh. Because she does. And then Donna takes Ellie home and apologizes for the meeting. She's like, I didn't know that was going to happen. My bad. Yeah. And she did not want to be put in a position where she's going to have to take sides, but she feels... Right. And she's like, the worst thing was that uh, everyone was turning against Ewing Oil. Like, they were all Jock's friends. And, like, JR, he's just so, like, what did she say? He's so. She uses some word. I, I know that the gist of it is she says that somebody is going to have to stop him at some point. Right. At some point, someone's she, it's gonna she's gonna have to take a side, and someone's gotta stop him. Uh, last time that happened, he, he took uh, some slugs to the chest. True, but we we can't repeat uh, the storylines. That would just be oh yeah, we would never do that. No. And then we cut to the last scene. Jr. wants to buy Gill's refinery, mm-hmm. but Gill isn't so sure about that. Yeah, what. Why Why do you, are you going to stockpile all this oil? What are you going to do with all this oil, if I might ask? And Jared's like, I'm going to do what I should be doing with it. I'm going to sell it for a healthy profit and make sure Ewing Oil is headed by the right person. And that is me. Yeah. And, and then freeze frame. Freeze frame, Jared. Drink once. And scene. I'm scene. <sighs> Okay, I'm giving this uh, 4.45 bourbons because I liked it, but a little bit less than last week's episode. And uh, two tickets to the Caribbean right now. Because I two tickets to paradise. We should pack your bags. We'll leave tonight. Thank you, Eddie Money. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I'm i going to give it um, a 4.5. It was okay. brought down a little by uh, Lucy's ridiculous outfits, but I am going to give it a four <laughs> five on the bourbons and a quick and uncontested divorce. Nice. Yeah. Apparently, more back at the uh, reunion last night, um, People Magazine was there, and we've posted a link to their article and the uh, pictures that they took at the event. And cool. closer to the end of the article, buried in there, is the fact that Linda Gray and Patrick Duffy are apparently going on a tour together. I know the one date is listed in Mississippi, I believe, in 
August when I'll, when I'll be in California, of course. Why do I keep going to California when everybody's out of town? Do they hear <laughs> that I'm coming and they just say, oh, we got to get the hell out of here. Run away! That's that Ewing barbecue is coming. We got to get the hell out of Doug. <laughs> um, but it's called Back the Number Two Dallas. And I guess they're going to be talking about stories and behind the scenes stuff and all this. And, That's pretty cool. And we don't have any more information about the article said it yeah. was a tour, but I only see one date listed at the moment, August 18th in uh, Mississippi, obviously. And Mississippi. I don't know where else I've reached out to uh, Linda's publicist to see what information can be provided. And I will be out in California, as I mentioned, in August. And he, her publicist has asked me to call him when I am in town this time. So Nice. Hopefully I'll be meeting up with him and uh, whoever else out there wants to meet up. So we will obviously provide more information when that comes. And don't don't forget the end of the month, uh, the Hollywood show. I've got to keep plugging that because that's now the next big thing where Deb Bernard, Barbara Carrera, George Chakiris, Nicholas. Um, Nicholas. Deb Bernard, uh, Joan Van Ark will be there who was just at the event last night, and everyone can go and wish her a happy cool. 80th birthday. Donna Mills and uh, a Barbara Luna, who played uh, Barbara Eden's uh, sister-in-law on Dallas in one episode. Awesome. So, and I, I know I go down into the like depths of people. If you may have appeared on Dallas, even one episode, I, I throw it out there. Then you're a part of Dallas. Yes, yeah. and that's why I've had Jason London and – Kate Mulgrew signed my um, Dallas album cover, which Mary has seen. I don't know if others have seen it. Uh, It's really starting to – we're running out of real estate on there for signatures. Uh, (laughs) So I'll actually maybe take a shot and post it on the page so people can see it at some point. And if anyone out there has any um, stories from last night, Charles Murphy, I know you're out there somewhere. You're a Massachusetts guy. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Contact us. Maybe we could have, if you were there, like contact us. We'll have like a little round table of w- what happened. Yes. So. Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll post cool. that, uh, an invitation to a round table yeah. to discuss that. So, yeah. um, and Mary, I know you're, you're awesome. not here next week, I believe. I am not. I believe well, I'm not here next week. I am not sure if we're going to be recording an episode or not, but hopefully we will. Um, if not, we'll see you in. Two weeks or For so. For episode 112, Fringe Benefits. Fringe Benefits. And that actually right. s- stayed at number five in the ratings, and it has no show notes. And it was directed by our boy, oh. Michael Priest. Michael Priest. Friend of the podcast. Friend of the podcast. Friend of the pod, uh, Michael yes. Priest. Um, in the meantime, until then, uh, you should check out our website, ewingbbq.com and um, if you're interested in helping us uh, to stay on the air check out our Patreon because we have some extra stuff there again Uh, and if you don't want to do that that's fine too we're not your mom so we're your your daddy (laughs) who's your daddy who's your dad (laughs) (laughs) we we also um Somebody had asked um, where they could find the episode with uh, Kathy, Cherie, and Michael. Ewingbbq.com. And under the section la- latest episodes, I believe it is, mm-hmm. we have yeah. all the episodes there, don't we? Yeah. So you can all just scroll episodes, down yeah. through. You can check that out. You can check out uh, Charlene and Lee McCluskey. You can check out Cherie, Omri Katz, Morgan Brittany, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and anything else we have posted. Uh, and more to come on the website. Really, we just we're just getting started with the possibilities of what we can do with it. So, more to come. More to come, and the reunion in Palm Springs may be over, but the reunions are not over here on the Ewing Barbecue Podcast. So stay tuned. Right? No, not by a long. Stay shot. tuned to see who we reunite next. And until then, we'll see you. We'll see ya. Bye. Y'all come back now, you hear? And Sarah, be careful driving Jock's car back to South Fork. See you next time. Yes, please, please. Next on Dallas. Hey, Miss Ellie, I hear you.
you're talking? Or Frank Crutcher? Why did you bring him into it? Isn't it a little soon after Danny's death for you to be seeing another man? The sight of you and that will set him up. I'll move in for the kill. And between us, we'll buy ourselves a refinery. What are you saying? Ewing oil isn't worth the lives of half a dozen people. Why don't we take Christopher and move away? Just leave? He wanted me to go to bed with him right now. And you knew he was going to come on to me like that. Are you saying I was using you like a hooker?